Excellent. I think we're live now. Hello, everyone. Greetings from the UK. Uh, my name is Begina Wetheril, and I'm the Director of Recruitment for Global University Systems UK Division, which consists of a number of UK universities. And today, I'm extremely excited to talk about one of our premium partner universities, University for the Creative Arts in the UK. Uh, I'm also extremely excited to welcome our colleagues from the university. We have Tom Nolde. Hi, Tom, uh, who is a program director for graphic design and illustrator. And we have Caroline Malloy. Hi, Caroline. Hi. Who is program director in fine art and photography. And they will be telling you all exciting things about graphic design, photography, and digital art at UCA. I also have my colleague Kasia Krupa here, who is a client relations, hey, relations manager uh, between GAS and UCA, who will be supporting us with answering questions as well. Um, just a few housekeeping rules, um, guys, you're all on mute. If you'd like to ask any questions, feel free to do so uh, by putting them in Q&A section and we'll take it from there. Uh, if you haven't started working with global university systems to recruit great students for UCA, feel free to reach out to us on ucapartners at gas.global and we will review your application from there. Other than that, sit back, enjoy, and I hope you find this webinar useful. Uh, over to you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Edugina. Uh, so just to double check, you can see the UCA logo before I get started. Yes, yes we can. Fantastic. So uh, hello, everybody. Um, welcome from, uh, from uh, Farnham, England. Um, we're located about an hour on the train from, from central London. Um, my name's Tom Norley, there's my mugshot. I've been working at the university for 17 years um, in various different jobs right the way through to my job now as, as Program Director for Graphic Design and Illustration, a BA and MA. And I've helped about a thousand students through their degrees uh, to go on to be successful creatives in the, in the visual uh, communication industries. So I'm going to be talking about BA graphic design uh, this morning, uh, this afternoon for some of you and, and uh, later on in the day for other people. Um, so I'm going to start off with some, some student work and uh, this is uh, cat packaging for, uh, for, for, for cat food. So some really uh, good creative work showing a variety of, of skills there. And then we have uh, packaging for uh, makeup uh, called Craze. This is a, a, a subscription service that a student designed, which was based on Instagram uh, makeup trends. And then more traditional, uh, this is book design um, for a dissertation uh, designed and manufactured on campus um, here in Farnham. Typeface design. Uh, this is a digital dissertation. This is uh, one of our studio spaces. So at the end of every year, uh, we have uh, different shows and the students put up their work. You can see on the floor, each of the students designed a, a floor graphic that went on the floor uh, to sort of highlight their work. So this is just a selection of a couple of projects at the end of year show, uh, obviously pre-COVID. And here's some more um, exhibition space with student work out. And this is the kind of exhibitions that we do um, every year, putting on a, a really kind of professional show uh, to invite people to. This is in our main gallery space um, at UCA Farnham. Um, we did a, a takeover of, the, of, the, of our main gallery as part of the degree show. Uh, where students got to present their work and invite industry in and have interviews and uh, all sorts of different things. So as, as we're going through the course, uh, lots of different students have different exciting stories. Uh, this student, um, she makes all her work out of paper and paper folding. And one of the things that she was um, commissioned to do was to do some, uh, some pitches for Selfridges Windows, which is a, a big department store up in uh, in London on, on Oxford Street. Um, 
Here's another um, show called Triangle Square Circle. You can see it was at Christmas time. We've got snowflakes on the on the windows there. Um, and this was another opportunity for first and second year students to present their work, to get feedback, to invite people in and, and to kind of see their portfolios. So as, we, as students go through the course, um, we, we teach students the foundations of, of what it means to be a designer, of what it means to be a, a creative in the creative industries. So we do a lot of different workshops. So this is one of our um, mind mapping workshops. Um, as you go through the course, we use a lot of sketchbook work, a lot of thinking uh, and documenting as you go through. So you can see a real variety of, of, of uh, sketchbooks here. And then as we get briefs and as we go through briefs, we do a lot of discussion about why should we do projects? Who are the clients? What are the sustainability issues? How is it going to get to market? Uh, what questions do we need to ask? So we really kind of debate why we're doing the projects, who they're for and where they're going to go. And during the course as well, we do lots of fun little projects as well. So um, this is a, a little toothbrush pen drawing uh, project that we do uh, for half a day. And we, we often do these silly little projects uh, because A, they're fun and B, it gets us thinking in a different way about, our, about ideas. So, so you may get your best ideas when you're not actually sat in front of a computer or reading a book. It might be doing something different, uh, something practical. So by the end of the first year, um, we call all our students graphic designers. Um, we will train you to a point where you're ready to start freelancing, you're ready to start taking commissions. And this is just a couple of examples of work that students have produced after about five to six months with us. So you can see the, the quality of the work, you can see the professionalism, um, and you can see that, the, that they're making work that would work outside in, in, the, in the big wide world. So we really encourage our students to work in their mother tongue. So we have students from all over the world, from Iran to Mexico, uh, to Russia, to Japan, South Korea, um, America. And with this, um, you learn about different cultures, you learn about different ways of working, you make great friends, you live with different people, and you really begin to experience what it means to be a global citizen and a, and a global graphic designer. And, and with that, as you're going through your projects, we really encourage students to use that in your work so that you don't end up just doing a, a, like a, an English version, but a, a worldwide version of what graphic design means to you. Um, so during the course, um, we do lots and lots of um, Adobe training. So uh, we do the work in the Adobe suite. So Illustrator, InDesign and Photoshop, um, also After Effects and Premiere. Um, and throughout the course, we do lots of kind of workshops. This is one of our um, illustrator workshops, just experimenting with the tools. Um, we really encourage students to do um, pop-up exhibitions as well. So this is a pop-up exhibition uh, that the first years uh, have done um, in, in the past. So this, this is just kind of showing our spaces and they invited people in and they uh, got got some feedback on their on their projects, they com got commissioned for freelance work. So it really gave them an opportunity to kind of get out there and start to experience what it means to be a, a graphic designer. So we've got three graphics course at, courses at UCA. Um, we've got graphic design at Farnham, which is, which is my course. We've got graphic design at Epsom and we've got graphic design at Canterbury. And they've, they've all got different identities. So, the one in Farnham is very much business focused and around branding and about packaging and is a very, very commercial graphic design course. So if you're interested in, in that area of design, then there are our courses for you. Uh, the graphic design course at Epsom is much more about uh, social responsibility as a, as a graphic designer and thinking about how can you use graphic design as a means for change within society. And then the one over at Canterbury um, is, is very much a crop combination of illustration, moving image and graphic design. So it's a real hybrid course and that's going to be renaming visual communication in, in the next year or so. So why graphic design Farnham? Uh, we're very much centred on the student. So it's about you, it's about where would, where would you like to go? Uh, what is your kind of aspirations as you go through? and we'll then tailor the learning around you. 
Uh, we have dedicated studio spaces. Uh, as I said a moment ago, we're very much business focused, thinking about your longer term career as a designer. And we have a whole host of specialist tutors that will help you, will guide you to different sectors within the design industry. And we have a proven track record of getting uh, students into work. So recent collaborations, um, we've worked with um, Farm Barrier Show, which is a very, very big aviation uh, show in the UK. Uh, we've worked with Bestival, which is a festival, a bit like Glastonbury, if anyone's heard of Glastonbury in the UK. And we work, uh, have worked with, with Crush Creative in the past, um, doing collaborations on projects. So our alumni, so some of our alumni are people like uh, Malika Favra. Um, she's a, a really fantastic graphic artist, done lots and lots of work, for lots of big clients like the BAFTAs. Uh, we've got people like Richard Lyons, who works for Apple in California. And previous to that, he worked at a design studio um, as part of the reband for the Airbnb uh, branding. We've worked with people like, uh, sorry, uh, some of our alumni have uh, been like Jasmine Rees. Uh, she was nominated as Young Designer of the Year uh, a couple of years ago. So she's worked on the redesign of things like packaging for Lynx, um, Carlsberg Export and Polos, which are household names of, of products. And then finally, uh, Chris Cox, um, he's now a lead artist for All of Us Games, uh, who did a very big game in, uh, especially in Asia, called Monument Valley. He didn't design Monument Valley, but he's part of the team that did. And previous to that, he was at Preloaded. So some really good alumni that have been really, really successful. So you can see here, we've got lots and lots of different companies that students have ended up working from from Apple through to, to Lego, through to Harrods, uh, through to pe people like Zach Agency, which is a very big um, youth um, branding agency um, based in London. So our course structure is very much uh, a triangle. We start very, very broad. And as you go through your journey uh, as a designer, you tailor your way through to where you would like to be when you finish. And we do this through uh, three sort of separate years. The first year, we look at the principles of design and, and workshops, how, how to do something. In, in the second year, we do electives and specialisms. So you can do tasters in different areas within the graphics industry. You then go on to do work experience over the summer. And then in the third year, we do live competitions, uh, national and international competitions, and then finally it culminates in a, in a final major project where you really begin to specialize and think about that final project as a, a springboard into your career within the creative industries. So throughout the course, we cover the theory and principles and practice of, of what it takes to become a, a graphic designer. So what subjects do we cover? Uh, we cover things such as editorial design and publishing, uh, user experience design and user interface design, information design, branding, packaging, art direction. And I've put et cetera on there because some students go on to do more animation based work. Some even get involved in Caroline's area with photography and art direction within that area. So it's a very, very broad um, base of, of things to study. And then this is just a couple of examples of the type of um, resources that our students use. Uh, things through from screen printing right the way through to 3D printing equipment and then the usual software that you would use. Uh, so finally, uh, just to kind of wrap up, our, our modes of delivery are one-to-one -one tutorials, um, seminar groups of about between six and eight people, uh, workshops, and then lectures like we're doing now, but in a, in a big auditorium. So if you're interested in our, in our course, um, you can jump on Instagram at gdfarnham.uca. Uh, we won't follow you back, but you can you can keep an eye on what, what we're doing, uh, our day-to-day -day activities. You can see student work, student trips when we're allowed to move around more uh, and really get to, get to grips of what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So our heritage, um, Farnham Art School has been here since 1866. And we've got lots of big alumni um, from UCA as a whole. So people like Tracy Emin and Zara Rhodes. Uh, more pertinent to us, to us is Martin Lambinan, 
who sadly passed away quite recently, but he was really, really big in the TV branding uh, sector. So worked on things like the BBC uh, Two rebranding. And then some of the big names that have come from UCA uh, from some of our graduates, things like uh, Wallace and Gromit, uh, Pepper Pig, which is very big in Asia, um, and Alexander the Meerkat, which is very, very big in, in the UK. Um, so why UCA Farnham? Um, it's very much a campus experience. So when you're here, we've got halls of residence. Uh, we've got lots of expertise across different courses. We've, with that, we've got lots of specialist resources that you can tap into. Um, in terms of transport, we're an hour from Gatwick and Heathrow, so it's very, very quick. And about an hour up to London on the train. Uh, but the big thing about Farnham is about community. So you'll be living with photographers and filmmakers and animators and illustrators and potters. And that network that you build as you, as you grow up as a student and as you leave, you'll draw on that network as you go on throughout your career as a creative person. So all those friends that you make, you'll work with through, for the rest of your life, I hope, uh, and those relationships you'll be able to draw upon as a creative person. So uh, why should you do a creative degree? And uh, this is one of the questions I had with my parents when I was young. Uh, and this is my perspective uh, coming from being a graphic designer and then now uh, running a, a course. So I think it's a really exciting and ever-changing industry. Um, it gives you opportunity to travel and meet people. It's a transferable job to any culture. Um, job satisfaction, seeing your uh, designs being used by someone in a museum or in a book or on an app, it's really, really exciting. And you learn a lot of transferable skills as well. So in terms of earning potential, our graduates tend to earn between 16 and 22,000 pounds within six months, in 40 months between 20 and 28,000 pounds, and then at direct, direct stage between 30 and 65,000 pounds. So there's a real variety of jobs and a real growth area in the digital sector. Our average starting salary is 19,000 pounds. So really, my job and the staff team job is to help you kind of build bridges uh, to, to your kind of destination as, as a creative um, practitioner. So I've got a couple of questions for you and I'm going to answer them. So the first thing is, what do you need in your portfolio? So we get this question all the time. How many, how many projects do I need? What kind of breadth do I need? I'd like to see a maximum of 12 projects um, in a PDF uh, uploaded onto our, onto the site and please show a, a breadth of work from drawing through to photography through to graphics work. Should you do a foundation or not? So we run an international foundation here um, and we also run um, the BA programme as well. What we would recommend that you do is you apply to us, we'll review your work and then we'll, we'll recommend which course is best for you. And our contact time, finally, we, we're two days a week in the studio practicing for the studio work. And then one day a week is doing uh, lectures and, and uh, seminars and that kind of thing. So finally, what kind of students are we looking for? Well, if you, you can imagine for us, we're, we're after students that are really enthusiastic. Um, you don't have to be the best at using computer. You don't have to be the best designer at the beginning. We'll make you into that. Uh, what we're really after is a, a room full of light minds that really want to push each other, uh, to make each other brilliant designers, to criticise each other and help each other. And that, we're, that ends up in a really fantastic and exciting uh, place to be as a graphic design student. So that's the end of my presentation, uh, Fatima. I've kind of rattled through it and I'm going to now hand over to um, Caroline. Thank you, Tom. I'll share my slides. Thank you, Tom. Really great presentation. And I like that you included the questions which are, you know, commonly asked by um, students. So I'm sure students find it really, really helpful. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I thought that was really interesting because I realised Tom and I use exactly the same skill sets and our students do quite different things. So I think that's really interesting for people to listen to uh, and, and 
and that's what's great about UCA is we can kind of work together. But anyway, I'm going to move forward and try and keep to my 20 minutes. So I actually look after um, fine art, film and digital art that will become digital art, uh, photography, uh, BA level and MA level. And today I'm going to talk about digital arts and photography. And I want to add that I'm a photography specialist. So my presentation is going to be slightly different. I'm going to talk to photography. I've been working with the photography students. Um, digital art, I've asked them to do a show reel, and we're really hoping it doesn't glitch because it's super super show reel but if it does I will put the the show reel the connection in the chat anyway so you can watch it under your own steam um okay so I'm going to move on and it's really interesting that we've got a few overlaps so just to kind of pick up where Tom left off you can see UCA Farnham the bottom left there so we are about an hour we're close to Heathrow we're close to London it's a small town. Uh, I would say it's a it's a safe town. Um, it's quite rural, and there is. I mean, I studied undergrad in a smaller environment. I think there's real benefits in being part of a community, and we're close enough to London so you can dip in and out. But I think there's that sense of belonging that I studied in a small university and a large university, and I was much happier in the small one because I knew my neighbours, and we were all kind of part grew up together in a sense. So I'm going to talk about uh, BA photography at Farnham. So I came here because, and I, I was very interested in the job, because it's a research informed practice at, uh, at Farnham. Um, I'm going to talk about the facilities and I'll talk a little bit about the pedagogy, which is our, like a learning method. And then I'm going to talk through some of the current work because I think that will give you a better idea of what's actually happening on the ground. So we have a fully equipped photography studios and we work in small groups to uh, give everybody a skill set within photography. There's print studios, there's a full, fully working black and white darkroom, colour darkroom, and there's a um, digital suite in where we, where we teach post-production. And we, we, we switch the way we work depending on how one is, is learned because we, we want to build in your first year, your visual voice, your critical voice, your, uh, your writing voice. So sometimes you're in small groups, sometimes you're individuals, sometimes you're in larger groups. So this changes depending on how you're learning with us. This is a small group of um, students looking at book publishing. And, and really thinking about not just what the image it is, but how it works and how they can understand it within a broader context. So I guess in terms of pedagogy in the first year, as, as I just said, to reiterate, we really want to work with your visual voice and give you a good skill set so you understand the breadth of the medium. We, we look at contextual theory, the skills in photography, the writing voice and an awareness of professional contexts. Um, in the second year, we, we encourage you to disrupt those rules, in a sense, and find where your voice is, experiment, try things out. Not everything works, but that's where innovation comes, which we're very keen on. And when you get to the third year, it's about supporting you to specialise and find your final approaches. So student works, I'm going to talk through the student work to give you a sense of literally what's happening now. And a lot of the work is responding to COVID because we're, we're we've only just come out of lockdown. Um, and I think that's really indicative of students um, uh, respond to what's around them. They use photography as a tool to think with. This is an exception to that. This is a student, um, a Indian student that's very interested in the representation of white women in the media. So he's doing a lot of work around fashion. Uh, we've got a student at the moment, we've got quite a controversial um, railway line being built uh, in Britain at the moment. Uh, so this student is engaging with that debate and photographing what's happening. The, the landscape is being kind of split apart and uh, people are falling on one side or the other in terms of their politics. So we've got a student that's specifically dealing with this theme. So the aim is by the time one gets to the third year is you find one particular area, one idea, and you really become a mini expert and you use photography and research skills to develop a body of work around uh, whichever ideas interest you. We've got Priyanka that's dealing with uh, people of colour and the representation of people of colour. Um, we've got a lot of work at the moment. We've got Joanna who's done some work around uh, the isolation in lockdown and how you can feel together but alone um, with the sense of separation. 
We've got Amanda that's really looking at um, isolation again and creatively responding to what do you do if your community suddenly disappears and you can't mix with the people around you. Um, we've got Matthew that's doing this amazing work of what happens if there's nowhere left to perform? What if everything closes down? How does one perform? How does one find their voice? So he's getting people to perform to empty spaces. Um, and we've got Louise that's really uh, um, emotionally responding and performatively responding to her experience of lockdown. This is second year work. So where I spoke about being experimental, um, we've got Olivia's work that's looked at her family photographs and she's, she's, she's mapped the relationship with sound and image through the photographs. She's of mixed heritage and she's interested in um, how that's kind of written out through, through history and through the photographs. We've got Matthew, whose work is, uh, he's dealing with mental health and how um, the, the physical world and the internal world are colliding during lockdown. So he's mixing scans of his brain with interference of uh, el electrical points. So we're very much talking about photography within a broad concept here. And Kerry, that's really looking at, um, at the algorithms of family photographs and what happens when the history of albums disappears and it's all online. What are we left with when we keep boring down to what the image is? And finally, another Louise who's done some work. She's looked at her family photographs and she's collected the, the, um, the, the, the information, the data from the photographs. And she's grown, in a sense, the, um, the, uh, as cultures, the, the, the traces that the family have left on the photographs. So her piece of work isn't, is no longer the photograph, but is actually the traces of um, bacteria that have grown through the family handling of photographs. And we're very much part of a research community and we have a lot of professors within our area that we draw from. So I will be talking about digital arts um, and one of, one of our uh, professors that runs um, the book room and we had this uh, interesting, uh, we couldn't quite solve how does one do a book when we can't actually physically do it. So there was a really experimental work with book room about making books with digital arts. And that was uh, with Emmanuel Wackele, who works across the disciplines, photography, fine art and digital arts. We've got Fast Forward Women in Photography, and it's broader in a sense that it talks about marginalised voices and how we can bring and diversify how we understand the world. Are we all given space to speak or is it one voice that's louder? So Women in Photography really is concerned with this issue and raising the visibility of marginalised voices. This very much plays into our pedagogy. Um, and that's run by Professor um, uh, Anna Fox. Ari Gersh, one of our professors, he deals a lot with conflict and the representation of um, Europe and the Middle East and how we understand the world from a very British or non-British perspective. So I guess these experienced professors teach into the kind of everyday teaching. And Sunil Gupta that has, has done some transformative work around the representation of um, gay men in Britain, and that's shown at the Photographer's Gallery at the moment. This work was done in 1976, and it was published three years ago, sold out straight away, and he was, he's now been commissioned to do fashion stories based on this work that was done in the 70s. So I think there's a really interesting conversation about how photography changes over time and Professor Karen Knorr that deals with post-colonial theory, uh, cultural heritage, and, and has been shortlisted for a number of major awards. So they all teach into the program, which is really, really exciting. We can draw from very experienced kind of practitioners. Uh, we also draw from around um, uh, uh, writing platforms. So we, we encourage uh, we, the editor of this platform comes and teaches with us and gives us a prize and get uh, this, uh, a third year student a prize to get students to really think about their voice as a, an artist, as a young practitioner. And we've been working with uh, Photo Fringe as well for opportunities to bring students out of the academy and into the community and show their work kind of beyond the four walls of the gallery. 
There is the potential on all of the courses to do an international year uh, in industry or um, at another university. And that's between two and three. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about graduate destinations, because I think that the, what's really great about what's happening at UCA is we really unpacked photography as a critical way of thinking about the world. But the question I'd be asking is, how does that help me get a job? So these are some of our recent graduates. So uh, this is Eileen Perrier, who uh, is an award-winning photographer now. She left us, she went to the Royal College and did a master's degree in photography, and now actually works in education at Westminster. Uh, Roy Mehta, who is, is a sessional lecturer with us, is, is an alumni, um, has gone on. This was the work he did at UCA when he was documenting North London and demonstrating the, uh, the multicultural uh, community. It was the Irish and, um, and the Asian community and how they interacted. And this work has been recently um, published as a book. Uh, we've got Ollie and Nick, uh, sorry, Luke and Nick, who, who work uh, collaboratively uh, commercially. They've just been shown in, uh, you can see colours here, Soho House. So they're, they're like a, a commercial collaboration. Um, so Martin Lang, so his work is more kind of independent photography. So this is an independent publisher in Britain and his work has just been commissioned and published there. So I guess what I'm trying to demonstrate is it's quite a broad field that um, students uh, graduate to. Uh, and Tom Bridge that does lecture with us, he's also a very successful photographer and artist in his own right. Alex Luck, who works commercially, this is some of his work. And finally, Joanna, that is where it was very interesting when she was a student in um, uh, boats and has made a, um, a profession around that. So because I'm going to talk to you about two, I'm going to move forward and start to talk to you about digital arts. But if you'd like to follow us, we're at UCA Farnham Photo. Please kind of keep an eye on us and keep in touch. We will show you what we're up to. Um, yeah. And I'm going to talk about uh, at the moment it's film and digital art. It is going to change to digital arts. And what I would like to do is show you a show reel. I'm not sure if it will get stuck, so I'm going to try. So bear with me a sec while I just escape, unshare, and then reshare. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm just going to stop that because of time, because I'd like to tell you a little bit about the course. Um, I can see that there's another five minutes on it, so I, I, I'll put the link in the chat, um, just because I think it's really important that I um, do share with you a little bit about, about not only what, what the course seems to look like, but what it does. So, uh, okay, let me just do full screen. So that was some first year work that was responding to the real world. And I guess what we're trying to do in the first year is, is get you to become an expert on moving image, lens base, photography, sound, experimental sound, and a bit like with photography, give you a good skill set to work with that then when you go into the second year, you can develop digital workflows that are appropriate to your practice, um, that can disrupt and find new ways of working uh, that emphasize the why, not the what. So why am I using this particular technique? So the idea is to introduce you in the first year to a range of things and get you to then start to draw them on them if they're relevant for what you're looking at. And I guess in terms of this, the question I would be asking is, what's the graduate destination? Um, this year, we've got two students going on to an MA in fine art at Goldsmiths. But uh, prior to this, it's very um, common for students to, to go into film production uh, as a production manager, a lighting technician, social media, and content manager. So what I did maybe uh, brush over there is when we go into the third year, you then look at kind of developing a project around your ideas, around your interests and in a sense becoming a mini expert within that area which is more of a kind of a mentoring teaching so to stay connected with what we're doing and actually uh, a couple of the students have just won awards on um, the film and digital art this is um, our instagram link and portfolio advice, I would always say, start with your best work, be selective. It's quantity, not quality. If you can bring sketch works or show ideas development, we're really, really interested in that. And, and demonstrate if possible that you can write around your ideas because you're definitely going to be challenged critically within our courses. And on that point, I would like to say thank you very much. I will put the chat in the link so you can watch that full video because it's really exciting and it really demonstrates very different visual practices um, that have responded to the same brief. Um, I will hand back to the host. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, great presentation. It's always great to see um, student success stories and where they go after they graduate. Um, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them into the Q&A section and we'll take it from there. I wanted to start with a question on industry placement that you mentioned, Caroline, because uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a great opportunity for students, for international students uh, as well to obviously um, get onto career ladder, shall we say, a little bit earlier, so to, to start obviously by gaining some work experience during their studies, which will help them to uh, get a full-time job once they've graduated. So mm -hmm. in terms of the industry placements for your programs, uh, what sorts of uh, placements do students tend to uh, get into and what, what sort of um, companies uh, they go to work for? So that's a really great question, because I think within the creative industries, um, there's um, it, it's challenging to think of it as a job because anyone within the creative industry will have a portfolio career. What they're doing at 20 will be different to 22, 25, 30. So I'm very much the thought process that we actually build a resilience in our students to understand where they sit and where they'd like to be. So we embed this in our learning across all three, all three years in slightly different ways. So in our first year, we, um, we have a unit where we get students to really identify what the profession might look like for them, um, because I think we come in thinking we know it and also things change. And the more we know about anything, it's one buys a camera and only when you get to use the camera do you realize it's the wrong camera. So the, the first unit in the first year when somebody is still uh, a learner is still learning their tools is they start to identify uh, where, where they might sit. In the second year, we run two professional units. Um, and the first unit is really giving you the skills to then work out how might I be 
find work in that area um because i'm a great believer if it, a learner will buy in if they understand where their place is and if we've got a cohort of 20 30 50 it's going to be very different it's not going to be the same so i'm really keen and supporting students to understand their particular learning journey and that can be anything from networking filling out cvs going to artist talks um going and doing um work with photographers but we have a unit that's just dedicated to understanding and developing and putting a plan in place and then to get to your question we then move forward and talk about placements but i guess i want to be clear is a placement might not within the creative industries be one place it might be a kind of a portfolio of um some curation work some working in galleries some uh, assisting a photographer some running your own business and the aim is that we build that plan in the first professional unit per student and then they go and execute it and we're kind of there in the background to support them but equally you know tom and i have spoken about what if we got students and this is something i've done in my last uh, institute to actually develop their own um exhibition in farnham you know farnham is a small town um they can work together that, and, and actually produce something. So giving somebody the skills to run their own social media, to direct an exhibition, to hang the work is actually more helpful for some students than actually just putting them in a physical placement that might not be as relevant because they, they didn't choose it. So it's not in a sense, a, 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 I'm avoiding the question, it's quite complex, I think. And then when we move into the third year, part of uh, within my programme, there will be, the students will have to have, in a sense, a professional future okay you've tried something out and some of it has worked and some of it hasn't worked but in doing that you understand the kind of professional you are what are you going to put in place now for when you leave and that could be post postgraduate education it could be teaching degree it could be i'm going to set up as a business as a photographer or a media person it could be very different and we support students so we bring in professionals to help with uh finding links networking a bit uh, and a cv at the beginning beginning of a degree to the end of a degree is quite different. Understanding the value in doing work that isn't subject specific, but one can really learn from that, it's like the soft skills and how one can maybe get a job based on that is, is a really important trait um, point that's often not considered uh, robustly. So for me, it's really important that we build in the three years very robustly across the degree. And on, on, on the graphics, um, it's just kind of a similar uh, proposition, it, slightly different. So in, in the first year, we'll, we'll do uh, maybe a live brief, um, which isn't assessed as part of the degree. It's an, a, an extra opportunity for the students to get involved in. So uh, before the lockdown, we, we did one with a, a, beer, a beer company and they had to design a load of stuff for the brewery and various other things in, in the first year. And that was in the first within the first semester of joining us. So, and then in the second year, uh, we get professionals in. They set a brief. They then do the project, and then they feed back on the projects. Um, sometimes they have opportunity, perhaps, to do work experience with those people or get their portfolios assessed. And then in the third year, we do the live competitions. Uh, that might be directly with industry, or it might be a worldwide competition. And then we have uh, professionals come in and actually look at the portfolios as part of a degree show and do interviews. So it's, it's three years of development. Um, and then alongside that, all, all the classic sort of CV things and things like that. Now, the, the main opportunity we, we find for students is in between the second year and third year. The summer over that period is the best period because students are ready they've got the skills and they're feeling excited. So often we might work with our networks and, and uh, put students forward or perhaps get students to get in contact, but it's, it's competitive. Um, so you won't be handed a placement, you'll have to work for it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's great to hear, obviously, there is support throughout your whole program at UCA, be it with, obviously, career services department, with academics as well, and building, I guess, uh, confidence uh, for students is important and understanding 
who you are and what you would like to do in future, I think is um, crucial. Um, and it's great to see obviously the support is there at UCA. There is a question here about digital art specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so the question is simple, what is digital art? And if you could please elaborate Caroline and how is it different from the usual art programs? Uh, that's a really great question. Um, uh, well, uh, for me, the three programs sit together and they all want to be digital art. So we thought there's space actually to make a course around digital art. Um, a lot of our kind of um, graduates now are being asked to understand digital workflows, but we're very much, we're not a film production course in terms of moving image. We're really interested in actually the, the, the digital formats as a creative practice, but the output of that could be quite diverse. And I think that's that's where it gets interesting. We sit within the excellence at Barnum is an excellence for art and technology. And we're very at the fore for thinking is what would happen really if we used uh, virtual reality as your learning tool? I think the, these are the kind of questions we're asking. So I guess there's not one answer, but we support you to develop your voice within the kind of the digital world. We might look at the real world and digital world, analog technologies and digital technologies and disrupt that and find new and creative ways of, of dealing with that. And what we found is our photography students were dipping into this. Our fine art students were dipping into this and our film and digital art students were really at the center of this. So actually we're gonna, the aim is to do something quite creative where you would have a major course, but you'd be able to kind of have minor um, support from the other areas to diversify your learning. Thank you, Caroline. Um... I can see there are some questions in regards with the application process. Um, so feel free to reach out to us at GAS. Um, so if you're an educational agency, reach out to your relevant uh, business developer in the region, or if you haven't started working with us, um, contact UCA partners at gas.global and we will look into your application. If you are a student applying directly, feel free to reach out to UCA questions at gas.global with any of your specific inquiries and we will look into your application. Um, there is also a question from a student in South Africa. Any different requirements? I mean, it depends on the program that you would like to apply for. Um, Cibu CISO, sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly. Um, so just um, feel free to uh, drop us a line and we will look into your case specifically and um, see if any I have a question as that well, you would need to yeah, you would need to submit. Um, yeah, sure, Kasha, go on. Um, Caroline, as we saw in the presentation, um, a, a presentation a presentation or a picture can speak a thousand words for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so what I think a lot of people do ask is, you know, what is the breakdown in terms of the assignments, the exams, you know, how do you guys actually assess people on, on these programs? Sure. Um, and uh, actually, that's something Tom and I are working on at the moment in the same program. Um, we have a certain amount of learning outcomes that we expect students to meet. Um, and we so I guess and they're all and, and Tom, do feel free to kind of interject because you might be able to add something. And they're all more or less doing the same thing. It's kind of like ideas, development, research how that idea has kind of been realized, what research has gone into it and the final piece of work. So it's, I think a mistake students or learners often make or don't understand is the value of that learning in the middle. So we don't just assess what this piece of work is, we assess actually what have you learned in that journey? So that could be through a reflective blog, it could be through your research. Um, have you gone all that kind of all the way to the end and made it as good as it possibly can be? Have you really thought about the print quality or the digital quality and the text and everything, that whole package? We're trying to make kind of rounded creatives in a sense that uh, don't necessarily just do their thing and leave it, but they understand the broad conversation around their specialism. So to do that, we, we assess them on not not just the end product but that development that creativity that journey and what we do in each uh what i'm doing within my program is each core unit 
we tackle from a slightly different angle to make sure we're giving you a different skill set. So it's not like it excludes other things, but the idea is that it, it's, it, it means that you're not being taught the same thing every year by every staff member. So we do that through themes. So for example, in the first year, the, the, the unit, you, the, what you just saw is really around the real. So the real for a photography student might be documentary. A real for a music, moving, Im stu moving image student is real about is about digital storytelling. So to do that, they're learning how to kind of sequence how what the history of documentary, um, non-linear narratives, linear narratives. But we put it around a theme so it's more creative and interesting, and also to give the learner the um, the opportunity of really doing that one thing they're interested in a slightly different way. So we work with. Um, the real world, um, the body, um, uh, immersive practices, expanded practices, um, and these will change over the years. This is just kind of what we're working with at the moment. Um, so you're always given one brief and you're given a certain, you're taught a certain set of skills to be able to achieve that brief. But the idea is that you run with it and take it in your own direction. And I probably would encourage uh, people, I, we didn't get to see the sh whole show reel because I think the staff member who put it together for me was so excited about that one film that she gave me a little bit too much of that film. But it would be really interesting for uh, anyone in the room to copy that link because you can actually see six or seven different people that have responded to that same brief and you would never think they were because they're just so diverse and one of them is so exciting because the whole of the film had to be done on zoom um so there's no people in the in the moving image bit but the interviews are all done on zoom but the research that's gone involved involved in that it's it's I have to say, I went to Goldsmiths uh, and did a master's degree there. It's master's degree level. It's fantastic. So they had to learn how to research to be able to do it. So in a sense, we're not looking for within my program just what this does, but all those aspects that inform what that does. Tom, it's, I don't know. Yeah. it's important to note as well, uh, Cassia, that it's not exam based. So it's oh, portfolio sorry. based. So yeah. a student would be set a, a brief for a unit they would have uh, X amount of time to, to deliver on the unit. They then hand a portfolio of work in, which then would be assessed. But we don't do anything under exam conditions, uh, unless you're doing something like journalism or something like that. That's very useful. Thank you, Tom. And, and one last question I had, guys. At the moment, I'm looking at the course spreadsheet, and I can see that photography, for example, doesn't it doesn't have the option of the professional practice here, as a lot of other programs at UCA do. You know, are there any plans, guys, of introducing yeah. that? Yeah, so if I could answer that. So we're, we're currently at the minute um, looking at putting in a sandwich year between the second and third year where students will be able to go and work for a business for a year. So um, we're quite excited about that and all students will be offered that. Um, but that's subject to validation at the moment. That's great news. Thank you, Don. Okay. And also, Cassia, I think it's important. It might not look like it's existing at the moment. Tom and I are working on the rewrites, but it, so what it is is it's happening within the units that are there, rather than separate yeah. units in the rewrites. They'll actually it'll be more transparent. It's like this is where it happens at the moment. It sits as a component within a unit that might not have professional experience written on it. Yeah. Understood. Thank mm. you, guys. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so just going back to uh, the question on digital art, um, there is a question again from Isha. Uh, is there any prerequisites for students applying for digital art programs? Um, no, I, uh, when I've quizzed the team about what they'd like to see and that th they uh, are very interested in seeing ideas, um, they, they don't want you to have a particular skill set because they, they believe that actually um, uh, technologies change and in a sense you might be ahead of us in the technology so they don't want to be too prescriptive but they're looking for creativity, ideas, innovation um, and a bit like the point Tom said if we felt the learner wasn't quite ready we might recommend they do the year zero and then come to us but in fact what we're looking for is enthusiasm and ideas really it's within the creative framework um, you know the fine art context but it's definitely using digital technologies to disrupt but that's what you come to us for and that's actually we want to learn from you and you can learn from us <laughs>
Excellent, thank you. And you mentioned year zero. Obviously, UCA offers a uh, international foundation for students who don't meet uh, the English requirement or maybe academic entry requirement or may not have portfolio um, yeah. to obviously apply for uh, direct entry. But I know Tom suggested obviously that students are still welcome to apply for undergraduate degree first year and yeah. then the application will be considered by academics and then obviously foundation may be recommended yes. dependent on the IELTS uh, scores though yeah yeah so for obviously one thing to keep in mind for students applying for uh, international foundation you would need to provide UKVI IELTS uh, in line with obviously the uh, UKVI uh, guideline um, so there is a question on the um, portfolio um, from Mana, well, filmmaking is something we have discussed in the past. Uh, we would be happy to take your question uh, if you just email us on the uh, the specific case, and we will take it from there. Um, in terms of the uh, support international students receive during their programs. I think the, one of the questions we are being asked uh, quite regularly as to how big class sizes are and what sort of individual support students receive from uh, tutors. Uh, do you mind if I say something, Tom? Yeah, go for it. Because I think it's relevant to Tom as well. Is um, as new to UCA, I could see there may be a little bit of a gap for international learners, and we're actually putting a program through at the moment for international learners um, that just. Um, what we've noticed is without meaning to, we tend to teach in a very British way and uh, a British learner might automatically know things just because it's repeating a way they've already learned. So we're putting in a unit that for international learners that isn't credited, but is a requirement to just help them understand what's critical thinking, what's reflective thinking. Is it okay to speak to my tutor and ask a question? Because there's a lot of shyness of international students. And we're used to our British students just shouting at us sometimes. And we just go, well, you know, step back. So in a way, we, we want to support our international learners uh, we, to understand in the and understanding the best way how we're teaching um, so they don't feel too timid to ask questions and understand even like how do how do we use the online uh, platforms you've got just one might be a little bit shy to ask those questions so we're actually putting a unit in for international learners and we're hoping that that what might help bridge some of the um, anxieties of somebody when they first arrive. There is a big um, international community here but I think one of the key things for any international students is to Get to know other people from other cultures so we're really hot on trying to get them to know everybody to understand different ways of working and otherwise you just end up being with other people that speak the same language as you in your class and what we want to do is kind of obviously we want you to be friends but we want you to be with the other students as well to get the the real experience of what it's like to study in the uk and um, just to go back to the uh, student to staff ratio we're working on a student staff ratio of one to 25 um, as our student ratio. Uh, some groups are obviously bigger and then we'll get more tutors in. Uh, some group, groups are smaller. Uh, and every student has opportunity to, to speak to a tutor on a one-to-one -one basis uh, by appointment. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think it's really important, um, like you mentioned, Caroline, as well, uh, some of the international students might be shy to begin with. It's a new country, new environment, new language, <laughs> um, new people. So it's great to see that UCA offers support to international students. There are lots of communities. It's great, obviously, that uh, all different nationalities are being brought together where they can also learn from each other and, you know, which will create more ideas, I guess, in future as well um, so that's great i think uh we've run out of time now but great session thank you once again caroline and tom really really useful and thank you everyone for attending um the recording will be sent to you after the webinar any further questions feel free to reach out to uca partners at gusted global if you're an educational agency um or obviously reach out to your GAS advisor or you say questions at GAS at Global or relevant business developer. Stay tuned for more webinars to come soon and uh, have a great day, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye, bye. Everyone. Bye. 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 bye.